Okay, so let's uh, try this one. It says, how many stereoisomers can be drawn for the following molecule? So let's try this again. So what is the formula for this? 2 to the n power. 2 to the n power, right? So 2 to the n. That'll give us the number of stereoisomers. In most instances, okay? So you got to watch out sometimes, mm -hmm. okay? So let's look. Well, n here, what is that? That's the number of stereocenters, right? Yes. So let's figure out how many stereocenters we have. So we've got one, two, right? Does everybody agree with that? Because H, methyl, Br is different, all different than this whole group over here, right? Okay. So we have n equals 2, so the number of stereoisomers should be 2 to the 2, which equals what? 4. 4. So we would think that we would have 4 of these, right? So what would those be? Well, we would have the R, R, the S, S, right? The R, S, and the S, R. Does everybody agree? Those would be the four that we would have, right? Yes. Okay, so in this case, what you'll find is since this stereocenter has the methyl, hydrogen, and bromine on it, and this one has a methyl, hydrogen, and bromine on it, okay, there's nothing else in this molecule, one of these uh, stereoisomers is going to be a meso compound, okay? So when you have a meso compound, right, it's its own enantiomer. So it's enantiomer is the identical molecule of itself, okay? So I've gone ahead and built the four different structures, okay? So if we look here, let's figure out which ones we have. So does everybody see? So we've got one, here we'll show the enantiomers, right? We see those two enantiomers. One of them's R, R, or one of them's um, R, R, and the other one's S, S, okay? Does everybody see the two enantiomers? Here, you can pass them around if you want to. And here, right, everybody sees probably the two enantiomers, right? One of them's S, R, and one of them's R, S. But watch what happens when I flip one of them over. Can I lay it exactly on top of itself, yes. right? So they must be what? Yeah, or identical molecules, right? Yeah, and you can see, and that was what I was going to say next, that there's a plane of symmetry there. So this molecule is meso, the RS version of it, okay? So let's just go ahead and draw the three isomers up there, okay? And just prove to ourselves, once again, that there's only three. So this one has the um, uh, hydrogens in the back. So already, right? So we've got bromine and bromine, right? So this one should be the RS or SR, whichever way I've drawn it, right? So we've got one, two, three. What is that? R. R. And then we've got the hydrogen's already in that. One, two, three, right? And the what is that? S. S. Okay, does everybody see that? So that's the RS. And remember, right, the RS, when I flip it around, is the SR. Okay, so it's the same molecule. So in this case, this doesn't work. Why? Because the RS equals SR. Why? Because it's a meso compound, okay? So the last thing I want to do is look at the two that are the enantiomers, the RR and the SS. And you should be able to tell, yeah, those two are enantiomers just by that designation, right? Mm -hmm. Watch what, try, what, I, what happens when I try to lay them on top of each other, right? Are they superimposable, do you think? Yeah. No, they shouldn't be. They're going to be opposite of each other. Do you all see that? Okay. There's no way you could turn these to make them superimposable on each other. Do you want to try? Okay. 
Any other questions on this one? Okay, so you got to watch out for those meso compounds, okay? Kill it? Yes. Okay.